Good morning from Bali. Um, I actually have been waiting for the sun to, to come up enough so I can make this video. So <clears throat> many students have been writing in and asking how to deal with relapse of an eating disorder. And the way I would define a relapse would be that you go back into restriction, that you go back into binging, and that you go back into purging. We could also say that uh, you go back more into over-exercising. And there could be like subtler relapses where it's going back on a diet, um, going back into excessive uh, exercising. And the heartbreak can be is that you feel like you've made so much headway with your eating disorder where you really feel like you can claim like I don't have an eating disorder anymore and I really want you to know that a relapse is normal and I almost don't want to use the word relapse even though I do um, because it, the challenge that we have uh, as you know with an eating disorder is that we have to eat you know, and that's the biggest challenge in the beginning of, of healing is like, oh my God, it's not like alcohol where I can just abstain, you know, or other drugs um, or pornography, you know, it's, it's like, no, you still have to feed your body and, and figure out how to feed your body and completely change your relationship with food, which as you know, if you've already been healing, this is not about food and your body. It's just how you express how you manage your own pain and how you are comfortable with and are working with your own power. The other heartbreak will be is that if you've got friends, family, or partners, um, as you know, you know, if they don't struggle, if they haven't had a struggle with an eating disorder, they're not going to get it. And, and that I know is a heartbreak and it is a place where you feel a little bit alone and that they can feel confused and even scared. You know, their own fears will get triggered like, oh my God, you know, you're, you're going back there. And I, I just want to remind you that one, they, they, they don't know how it feels. And two, it's more their fear of, of somehow they're going to lose you or that you're going to go back into that pain where they can't connect with you anymore or that, that somehow they lose some access or they just don't want to see you suffer. So remember that that's where they're coming from. Um, you know, that I, I actually do a whole separate program of working with people who are, are supporting those who are healing from eating disorders. Uh, because if you haven't had one, it, it can seem really confusing. Um, and of course, if you do have one, for you, the pain is just so obvious. And, and there's just a part of you that really wants to be felt and understood and also not judged. So this is the time when you find yourself regressing in any way to reach out to people who do get it, um, whether that's friends or you know a therapist or a family member that gets it, but reach out. So let's talk about what what does a relapse, you know, what does it really mean? Um, because you know it's not about food and your body, but all of a sudden you're finding yourself going back into this, I want to call it like a dark familiarity. So whether we're talking about food or other addictions or other patterns in our life, when we get stressed out, the place of comfort will be the known, even if it's dark, even if it's harmful. And I can't quote the exact studies, so forgive me on that, but there have been studies that it's really hard to break out of your dark familiarity. Um, I mean, we could even talk, it's like your own personal Stockholm syndrome. Um, so when things get stressful, it's like, okay, where is that place that, that I know, I know all the edges, even if it's harmful, I can predict that pain. So I'm going to just give you various possibilities of why you might be regressing, see what resonates, and maybe other things will come up to you as well. 
So one thing will be like, maybe your life is changing a lot and, and not even changing in a bad way. I mean, if we kind of look at what's happening in the collective, there's a lot of change that's happening on this planet and on a personal level, um, whether we like it or not, whether we decided, yep, yeah, I'm ready for this change. Um, and, and even if the change is meant to be really productive and it's gonna take you to this place that you never could have even have imagined and it's wonderful, it can feel still seem scary, right? Like it's the unknown, you know? And so there's gonna be a part of you that's reaching out for that known. So is that happening in your life right now? And so the question would be, where's, as you're changing, where's your new stability? What are some new ways that work for you to soothe you? Because we are looking for some sort of stability and safety, which is why we'll go back into that pattern. We're also looking for soothing. For those of us who have eating disorders, it's like that food, even if we're like harming ourselves with food, it's, it's our own, I would say like warped way of looking for soothing. How can you get that? Sometimes it's gonna be with people, but sometimes not. Sometimes you need it through a pet. Sometimes it's through your own relationship with art. Sometimes it's just creating a slowdown. Sometimes it's having a certain environment that feels really soothing. The people I work with who have eating disorders, I, I, usually it's highly sensitive people. So the details do matter. Environments do matter. And so unconsciously you might be reacting to certain things because something doesn't feel right to you. You may not consciously know that, but unconsciously you feel that. So what are some new ways to soothe? And you've got to experiment, right? So if you try one thing and you're like, it doesn't work. Okay, well, there's other things, right? What are some new ways to create that feeling of safety and that feeling of stability? Because everything is changing. Sometimes it can also be a way to manage actually, like there's just so much energy running through you in a good way. And you're like, I, I need to calm it down a little bit. Like this, this is too much of a, for lack of better words, like of a, a raising in frequency, you know? And so it's like your way to manage how much can I handle, even if it's good stuff running through me, you may still not believe that you deserve it. It also is a lot of energy. And so, you know, there is a safety in, I live in this level of frequency. Am I ready to really up level? So, be compassionate that it's almost like a way that you're trying to, to moderate. So let's talk specifically. Um, if you're going into restricting, that means usually that there's a part of you that's looking for some way to control. You feel out of control in something else. I want you to feel, because it's, it's going underneath, right? It's, it's, it's feeling underneath. Is there something where you feel either that you're being controlled in or you're feeling out of control and that you need to step into your power or assert yourself in some way or, or slow down or, or create something where you feel like you've got your power again so that you're not harming yourself. It also could be, it's like that restrictions of safety. It's like, I know what's happening here. I'm terrified of flowing. And so how can you start to allow yourself to safely feel like you can start to flow again. Are there things that you're saying yes to that really, if we get honest, it's a no. Maybe there are things that you're saying no to that if you really get honest, you say yes. I know you're still learning how to be in your body because the way that we can know what our truth is is through the sensations in our body. Not our head, right? How does it, what does yes feel like in your body? What does no feel like? And, and there's gonna be nuances because of course, you know, we wanna step out of that eating disorder mind, which is like, I'm failing, I'm winning, this is good, this is bad. Like we're in a multi-textural reality where, you know, it's a lot of half notes and, and like blending colors and everything's constantly shifting, right? So, can you allow yourself to flow with that? And that undercurrent way of judging yourself, can you watch that? Because if we have an eating disorder, that means that when things get stressful, you attack yourself. When things get stressful, you attack yourself. 
either punishment through restricting or overeating or purging with food, whether it's being just mean to your body, no matter what, what he or she looks like, whether it's you know punishing and like over-exercising or not allowing yourself to exercise, or just the thoughts you have in your head. And the challenge will be that you're so familiar with, with the way that you speak to yourself in maybe a dark way, you can't even catch how much it's affecting your perception. So the one good thing that I have when I work with people is I get to you know hear how you're speaking to yourself. And it's so obvious to me, but it will take time to realize, oh, I could actually be kinder to myself. I, I, I think that I'm looking at reality in, a, in a, a truthful way, but I'm actually looking at reality in a way where I'm always the one that's bad or at fault. Or maybe everyone else is bad or at fault, right? There's, there's many ways that will fix our reality. So with restricting, you know, there, there is an undercurrent fear or terror. Some of it can be current stuff. And some of it can be really old stuff. So how can you discern what's really showing up for you? In terms of binging, it's usually a stress response. It's usually, it could be that like you're at a party and you want to fit in and everyone else is just eating a lot. So it's that part of you that's like, I want to belong too, right? Especially when we're really sensitive, we have a hard time being okay with being different. Okay, so there can be that one. It also is definitely protection, right? Like, I, I, I want to feel something around me so that I have a barrier with other people. So with my, my students that tend to binge a lot, um, I, I really do a lot of boundary work. Is there a place where you feel like you want boundaries but you can't actually hold them and it's hard for you? And it could be like they're amazing in some places and in other areas, it's more challenging, right? So it's never all or nothing. It can also be that you're trying to numb out from something. It's like there are these deeper feelings and truths. You don't really want to have them. They're coming up. And so this is your way. How can I somehow protect myself? Or I don't really want to admit this. So again, I would ask you, instead of thinking I'm failing, right? Because especially with binging, we're like, oh, I need to go back and restrict more or be on a diet. No, 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 no. We want to step out of diet culture. We want to step into, we can actually trust our appetites. Sometimes we eat more than, than we want to, but that's fine. It's not the end of the world. But also that our body can actually self-adjust and we don't have to be so nitpicky and hypercritical and that our value isn't because we put some pounds or kilos on or our value isn't because we lost them, right? Our value is beyond our size. And that you can trust that there's an inherent health in your body. And that's, it takes practice, it takes years. You know, so if you're fresh out of it, it's like patience. I, I know we want fast results, but the more you can just be honest with, what's my real appetite? What's my real hunger? Oh, I've got other hungers that my usual is to go towards food because you, know, you might have had things where it's like there weren't other things that gave you pleasure or soothing growing up. And so it's like food is that safety. It's a constant. And it's something that you can kind of take your battles out on. And no matter how many times you, you, you take your battles out, it's always there. It's almost like this unconditional love. So where can you start to, over time, find that safety in you, find that unconditional love in you? So for sure, like I notice when, when I've got to write things that I'm not in the mood to write or there's like all this stress with work, I'm curious about how many snacks I have. I mean, and, and there, where I have to really be honest, where it's like I feel pressure coming in. If I was really honest about my own time management, I wouldn't be doing this right now. Do I have the guts to actually stand up for myself to be like, hey guys, I know you're making all these requests, but I actually, I don't wanna do this, I need a break. So a lot of times we're, we're eating because we're looking for some sort of break and we're not able to give ourselves that deeper break, which is I need to say no to some work or I need to take space from kids or from partner. You know, I, I, I just need a break. So I'm curious about that one. 
The other one will be like there's an uncomfortable situation that just came up and and it feels uncomfortable and and you don't know yet that you're able to stand up for yourself or um, 